thewhothatdaily.com. That's right, thewhothatdaily.com. Your one-stop oh. shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, oh. even the top flight boxing. So if you're a who that and you're looking for a place to stay oh. up on your team, thewhothatdaily.com is your site. Oh. Thewhothatdaily.com for the sport who that in all of us. Check out the Pro Shop. That's right, the Pro Shop is the platform store where you can go and buy all the latest merch to support the platform. Available at the Pro Shops, we have dozens of hundreds of products available for you and your family. Unisex tees for men and women, hoodies and sweatshirts, tank tops, kids and baby items, long sleeve tees, mugs, pillows, wall art, bath bedding, face masks, phone cases, stickers, bags, fanny packs, socks, hats, and many other items. Please feel free to check out the pro shops the link is in the description section below and remember it helps the platform continue to grow check out the pro shop and who that too Pelicans, you're now tuned into the Pelican Post Game Report. Much love to the family. Appreciate y'all joining us for this latest installment of the Pelican Post Game Report. We are in the building. Much love to the fam. Appreciate y'all kindly for joining us for this one. This Pelican Post Game Report is entitled, uh, this is, uh, I guess it's called Pelican Draft Talk. You know, the draft is a couple days away. Uh, yep. and, and uh, we got a lot to talk about on this stream. So much love to the fam. Appreciate y'all joining us in this thing. I'm Big Q. That's DC. Uh, DC, a lot right. of been twisted and turned from the last show that we had. We have the fact that the Pelicans uh, dropped that summer league schedule. We'll put that up there and cover that. We'll talk about uh, what Wendy said about the Pelicans possibly. Okay. Who, 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 who is Wendy? Windhurst. Bri uh, Brian Windhurst. <laughs> Wendy. 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 That's what we'll talk about with Wendy. He's calling man Wendy. Because uh, Wendy's is his favorite restaurant. Man, that's right. <laughs> that was a little below. I'm sorry. Wendy. Obviously, obviously, Wendy's is the man's favorite restaurant. That's why you call this. That's why he's Wendy Winhurst. You know what I'm saying? You get me? Well, that's the uh, punch below the belt right there. But anyway, let's <laughs> phone. We're going to hear what Wendy had to say about the Pelicans. And it was stuff that we may mention here. The money just don't make sense, fam. About the Graham thing, we knew it either either happened soon or it happened uh, right before the trade deadline. And there, the, the Pelicans have been rumors circulating around with them moving that pick if it made sense. <clears throat> and as now, Windhurst dropped some stuff on us a couple of days before the draft. Mm -hmm. We'll also uh, cover that as well as other topics uh, in rumors DC pertaining yeah. to the movement of uh, the pick and potential players as rumors are situating that the Pelicans are looking at two guys with the pick. And we'll go over that article as well. So well, hit the like button, fam. Please feel free to hit the like button. And, of course, we'll show you the new, the new commercial of Zion Williamson in shape advertising his shoe, which was cool, as well as his shoes. is about the, the Zion 2s is about to drop as well. DC likes those joints. Uh, so I like the Voodoo edition. I like them. So we'll we'll cover all of that uh, and uh, look at the cap as well in this rendition of the Pelican Post Game Report. So without further ado, we'll start off with Winhurst, DC. We'll start off with Wendy and his commentary on the Pels, man, on what he think the Pelicans will do. So uh, okay, here, here we go. It's Pelicans who are shopping Devontae Graham, um, looking to uh, to pick up a guard in this deal with their draft pick. So and their draft pick and move around. It wouldn't surprise me if Washington was involved in a trade where they either picked up a guard uh, for their pick or swapped their pick to another team, potentially maybe even the New Orleans Pelicans who are shopping Devontae Graham 
um, looking to uh, to pick up a guard in this deal with their draft pick. So, and their draft pick. And so that is Wendy Winhurst's so, voice. Oh, who's looking to pick up a guard? Us or, or, or the Wizards? I mean, by I that kind of Wizards. I think he was saying the Pelicans. That's that, I could play it again. Hold on. Who are shopping Devontae Graham, um, looking to uh, to pick up a guard in this deal with their draft pick. So, and their draft pick and move around. It wouldn't surprise me if Washington was involved in a trade where they either picked up a guard uh, for their pick or swapped their pick to another team, potentially maybe even the New Orleans Pelicans, who are shopping Devontae Graham, um, looking to uh, to pick up a guard in this deal with their draft okay. pick. So. And their dra- there you go. Wendy clear clarifies. So we so, we trying to get another guard. I, I mean that makes sense. We need a shooting guard. So so and we the, take point guard. So you know makes sense. Well, let's let's go over that DC because that's interesting that Wendy's dropping that knowledge uh, about the about us potentially looking at the Wizards and getting Graham to them. So this is uh, interesting. I don't know. Of course, a lot of rumors circulate right before the draft. You don't know what's real and what's what's not real here. Yep. So I mean, it's a lot of stuff going on. But DC, let's That's dig the into in the, the Suns and on the action too. We have rumors with them too. But um, I, I think it's interesting. Um, we obviously don't need to give up the eight pick just to get rid of Devontae Graham. But if you're going from eight to ten, and you're getting off of Graham, and you're not taking anything horrible back, um, let's say if we do that and we get uh what. KCP, you see anybody else on their roster that'd be interested in us? Other Kyle, than KCP? Well, I mean, Kyle Who's Kuzma it? doesn't fit. Rye, uh, Rye Hachimura. Hey. No, Corey Kiss, but there you go, DC, your guy. <laughs> what about uh what about that center they got, man? That brother that gave Zion issues. Oh, Daniel Gafford? Daniel Gafford. Oh, they they One probably point, like one, him. Nah, and then and, and then the money. Well, KCP's deal is that what well, his average is thirteen point nine right here. You're looking at the statistics here as provided. Well, I mean, if we get Daniel Galford and KCP, then you know they add in one more little trash can player, and we could throw them uh, Garrett Temple in the deal, <laughs> and the money <laughs> would be perfect. Boston. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a yeah. Well, Gafford will kick in, man. So I mean, this upcoming season, you see, he's making fourteen million guaranteed. Gafford? I mean, that's, no, that's Kentavious Caldwell Pope. Oh yeah, it's at 29 20. years of age right there. So his deal is a three-year, almost $39 million deal. But this year, they'll absorb that $14 million guaranteed that he's unrestricted after that. So <clears throat> that makes it very intriguing and interesting if you look at the statistics on KCP. I'm not saying this deal will go down, fam, but as you can see, he played 77 games last year for the squad for them. Right. And, uh, and not bad production from KCP in this thing, man. So uh dc this is the latest stuff that they're talking about and even uh throwing some names in there and a lot of people automatically thought it was caldwell pope it could be another i don't know who else would you get uh what else what else would you, would you get i mean we're looking at the roster right now so um if it ain't daniel gafford I mean, gafford is that just under what else million. do the wizards have that we really want <laughs> i mean i mean bradley bill and you're not going to get. I mean, that's uh, yeah. Come on. All right, you're not going to get Bill. That's like you're somebody Bradley, Bradley me. Bill. Oh, you, you can McCullough have one of the ornaments off my kept. Christmas tree, and yeah, you try right. to take the goddamn star off the top. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, CP. Yeah, Caldwell Pope makes the most sense right there. Most certainly won't be Kyle Kuzma, and most certainly that it won't be him. So I mean, and and then the view, uh, Daniel Gafford is 1.9 million there so i mean uh, i don't know dc i don't know i don't know what's that's going the, on. that's one of the only centers i've seen gives Zion some issues bro i would love to have him on my team if not for any other purposes but that <laughs> but i think he's actually a pretty uh good defensive center though you can see the numbers on uh Devontae graham fam uh in 22 23 averaging 11.5 million coming into this upcoming season you just mm-hmm. seen kcp's money at 13 million so What's intriguing and interesting, man, is that the Pelicans, man, as rumors circulate, we're not saying that these things are going to occur. This is just rumor talk right now. But the the information is, as we know it, is that they are shopping Devontae Graham. Right. That would be the case. If anybody was going to get traded, it had to be him because obviously we said it just makes perfect economic sense. Once you sign Jose Alvarado, D.C.'s third cousin, then what occurs is you would end up getting 
uh, you you he just outplayed him out of a job and Graham just I mean he couldn't deal with the pressure but goes to if sending him to Washington and bringing KCP back. Uh, I mean you get rid of his contract, but what else is it? I mean you, you what other draft? I mean, you still get you get the tank pick, and I would imagine yeah, you back a couple of spots. along probably another uh future first or uh, uh some uh second round pick maybe this year. I don't I don't know. But I would imagine it would be something else too, because um, to just swap the contracts of the guys and we swap in position is like saying, uh, "Come on, man, Devontae Graham was bad, but swapping Devontae Graham for KCP isn't like a huge upgrade." Well, I need to attach my A pick to do that, you know. So I, I would think something else would be involved. Yeah, time will tell, bro. Time will tell, but uh, yeah, Graham, man, we knew eventually that the, that that might be the case with Devontae Graham as he moves on, uh, will be yeah. pushed out of the way. But DC, in the way, let's continue on with some of these other trade scenarios, man. One of the the favorite scenarios that you told me about uh, early on was the one that was circulating about Cam, uh, yeah. from Cam Johnson from the Phoenix Suns and the Pelicans' eighth overall pick going. I will, down. Are they sending Devontae Graham over there in that trade? I don't think I've seen one that that features uh, uh, Cam in that like with him going there. I, I, if we're giving them Devontae Graham and, you know, they giving us they first this year and they first next year or, or the year after next or something, then, I mean, that would that would be interesting. That would be interesting. But they got to I, – I can't just trade Cam for the eight pick. <laughs> like, it's got to be more than that. But um, I think he fits this team, man. Obviously, he's familiar with Willie Green, and uh, who doesn't want a guy that's like six nine that shoots forty percent from three? What team doesn't that work on? You know what I mean? So I'm all for it. Um, but I would like to see a respectable package in return because I'm not trying to help the Phoenix Suns because I know once you get Cam. Then they, I guess they're trying to free up whatever room they can to maybe re-sign Aiden or do whatever they're going to do. And then you giving them an eight pick, that's obviously going to help them. And then we got to go turn around and try to fight to get through them to go where we want to go in the playoffs, man. So I'm really not a big fan of the whole thing, per se. I like the player. I really don't like the idea of helping Phoenix, to be honest with you. Yeah, you can see his contract, DC. Um upcoming year at 5.8 million for cam and then uh the 27 when you turn 27 in the year the uh 23 and 24 year you got a qualifying offer there of 8 million so i mean it, and then you got the uh, qualifying off they got a hole there of 17.6 million so very interesting then then the 23 year he's a restricted free agent right which you, you have an opportunity to kind of match with whatever offers but the thing is uh, you get one good cheap year of Cam, and then you have to eventually pay him. So I think that's the thing a lot of people are looking at, but also not realizing that you're about to get ready to pay Zion Williamson. You obviously, when it comes time, you're going to extend out on CJ McCollum. Uh, you know, so where's the extra money going to come from? You're going to go into the luxury to acquire the one. You know, I mean, <clears throat> we have to think about those things. Does it make monetary sense? For some of those yeah. things to occur. So uh anyway, DC, let's keep it moving, man, because that's very interesting. Uh, but also the other moves we talked about, like some of this stuff going on with the uh the Pelicans draft wise, is that according to this report right here, it's reported by the Pelicans report. Rivals believe Dan Dyson Daniels and Benedict Matherin are the Pelicans' top choices at number eight in the sources of Jake Fisher from the Bleacher Report. So that's the two guys right there, DC. Matherin and Dyson Daniels kind of disappointed a little bit because I like both of those guys, Dyson more than Matherin, but also my favorite is Johnny Davis and for obvious reasons, but I'm not mad at either of those picks. Let's talk about them, bro. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be upset at either of those picks either. I mean, again, or oh, them Zion shoes, huh? again, um, <laughs> I don't really think you can go wrong in this draft with the Pels, man. It's kind of hard for us to mess up. We really would have to overthink it to mess up. Dyson Daniels obviously would be a better fit than Matherin, in my opinion. 
Um, y'all know I like Shaden Sharp. Uh, they got articles about him out there. Johnny Davis is also a guy that I really like, and I actually would like um, over probably both of these guys. Um, Wood Daniels kind of right there, almost even. Um, Matherin, though, I think he gives us still a guy that can shoot with the potential to play defense. He's got some athleticism. Daniels gives us a two-way guy that can be um, <laughs> who can who can run the second unit if need be. Um, yeah, as you can see, his three-point shot is, ain't as bad as uh, people were thinking. So he has a lot of ability there, as well as to play defense. As you see him shut down that brother going at all. So um, Dyson Daniels is a phenomenal player on a lot of different levels. He's actually – I think better at all of the stuff you would say that Ben Matherin isn't. <laughs> and it's kind of like a vice versa with those two guys, but um, they both are guys that could have a really, really great impact with the second unit. And that's why I'm high on them. So if we did wind up going there again, uh, Matherin wouldn't be my favorite pick, but I wouldn't be mad at all, man. I mean, it's still the dude that you can get, a high level of production out of. I just think he would be like more of a forever role player and possibly uh his stealing ceiling would be a starter. Um I think. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I see it. I see him being a, a good quality starter as a ceiling for him or a high quality starter. Um or just a role player, you know. Um and there ain't no there ain't no knock. Like I think he he'd be able to get that three ball off and that's really his thing. He's going to get to the hole and do stuff like that from time to time. But um, his game is is really uh, finishing like that and, and hitting three-point shots. Uh, the other things, I really don't see it. And you got to see he got his game in the transition. But he's very athletic, you know, um, got a nice three-ball shot. I was just, just something about him, man. I don't – not fully sold that high on him like a lot of other people. But us taking him at eight. That'd be a good move, still. Yeah, Matherin getting funky with it, man. On those, on those highlights, man. I ain't seen him dribble and break nobody down, bro. That's kind of what had me let the skirt. Yeah, yeah and he got to get, get the table set for him, bro. And then there's questions about his defense, ac defensive acumen, uh, as well as what kind of defensive players is Ben yeah. Matherin. So I mean, that's a big part of it too. So yeah, very interesting, man. I'm going to take this time right here to thank the Pelican uh, Flock Band for being uh, checking out all the videos. Please feel free to check out the player breakdown videos there in their own playlist. You can also go there and then share the playlist in its entirety. And then also there is the prospect playlist, too, with all of the prospects the Pelicans are looking at. That's available. We still got a couple of prospects left to, uh, left to Break down. I think uh, to, today's uh, tonight's uh, show so was, was so high. Out, right, was so, so, so they're feeling so high. And then, of course, it's Jalen Duran. And then, it's, and then the next one is the second rounders. We go into it and break down second rounders. The Pelicans could possibly be interested in as well. So please feel free to share those and check those out. You might. Have, well, I might have to speed them up, BQ. The drive about to be here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, they all they've been out. I mean, so you know, it's it's, it's oh, okay, been yeah, yeah. that time, man. So it was pretty good. All right, DC, let's let's keep it going, man. Let's keep it going. Uh, and let's let's go. Let's move on this one, man. Let's let's play this one here. Zion Williamson's uh, new commercial for his shoes, and it's pretty cool because a lot of people don't need to call him Fat Boy WB3 and the rest of these. Oh, he ain't Big Z no more. Uh, calling the man all these old uh, crazy names and shit. So, uh, and the man ain't doing nothing but busting his ass. So here, here we go. Fat boy. Will it say fat, fat. It's fat. F-E-T. -E fat boy. And you can see right here, this is the shoe commercial of Zion Williamson working out, dunking. And you can see, uh, if you look uh -oh. at him. That medicine you know, ball, Zion. Right? You know, he's doing his work, putting in his work. Right. And working out. And as you can see, he's, he looks pretty slim and trim and and of pull course, up, he, pull up a steel shot, big Q. Put up a steel shot of him, man. All right, I will get I'm a steel, sure. a steel, a, 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 a fit boy, not I fat boy, so. but a fat boy, but fit boy. <laughs> I, I think uh, Zion, Zion looks good, man. He looks, he, 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 all right, man. He doing this, his thing, man. And this is the shoes right here 
one of the shoes right here, DC likes yeah, that's, him. That's the Voodoo edition. That's the ones I like. But I don't think that's the ones that's dropping first. And probably the ones I would think that was in the commercial, the all white joints. Yeah, the all white joints is you're dropping. But those yeah. are the ones that DC said he's going to. I'm not really crazy buy. about them, but I, I like the Voodoo edition, man. See if I get my hands on them. Yeah, but Zion Williamson family, uh, looking slim and trim in the commercials, man. Uh, of course, you did hear uh, DC what uh, CJ McCollum was saying that he was going to work out with him too. So yeah. the Pelicans are for real, man. The Pelicans are definitely for Summer real. Summer league coming up, Spain. man. They're all going to be in Vegas. Everybody going to be in Vegas. Yeah, the whole the team. League. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, going to be out there with his cast on, but he going to be out there in Vegas. I know. That's that's gonna be real exciting, man. I'm really excited about the summer league with the Pels, man. It's always for the last three years, bro. The, the summer league has been really exciting for us. Yeah, we're gonna move into that, DC. Let's get on it because that's one of the things we're talking about with the summer leagues. Pelicans open summer league against the Trailblazers. Got uh -oh. the full schedule here. It's Christian Clark from Nola.com dropping the scoop. Pelicans and Trailblazers hold back to back lottery picks at Thursday's NBA draft. Pelicans enter the night. As the owners of the eight selection, the Trailblazers at seven. This is this is there's a chance the players from each team, so whoever they select, will face each other in the NBA Summer League, which take place July the seventh through the seventeenth. The Pelicans play the Trailblazers in their Summer League opener at nine p.m. on July the ninth in the Thomas and Max Center in Las Vegas. The game will be broadcast on ESPN two. Pelicans full schedule is as follows: Game one against those same said Trailblazers. We said the time. Game two. Will then happen two days later against the Atlanta Hawks at 5 p.m. on NBA TV. Game three, the Pelicans will face the Washington Wizards 5 p.m. two days after that, July the 13th on NBA TV. Game four, New Orleans Pelicans against the Los Angeles Lakers at 10 p.m. July the 15th, ESPN2. And then game five, the Pelicans versus two, uh, TB, uh, to be determined. Now, all 30 NBA teams are guaranteed five games. The teams with the best two records after four games will meet in the Summer League Championship game on July the 17th. So that's the schedule for your New Orleans Pelicans. It was a pretty fun Summer League last year, D.C., and it showed yeah. some potential how the Pelicans fired off the gate, the young Pelicans fired off the gate. And then when the season started, there was a lot of momentum and happiness about it, and then we kind of went to that 1-13 to thing before ultimately had to work ourselves out of it. But the Summer League, man, we'll see our young guys, but you've seen – Herb Jones there performing. You've seen Trey Murphy dunking on people in the summer league. You've seen Jose Alvarado stealing the ball in the summer league. You've seen Najee Marshall play really good ball in the summer league. Mm -hmm. So you've seen some of these guys. Kyra, Kyra played good ball too. KLJ did okay in there as well. So, I mean, it's, it's intriguing all at the same time. So, DC, thoughts on the summer league, man? Yeah, man, this is going to be uh, exciting because I, I know a lot of these guys are, are fighting for playing time, man. Um, we have set rotations now. Uh, guys' uh, roles are etched in. So I think the fact that we have that and we got guys that have been here and we got people that want more time, you know, that possibly can earn a little bit, man. Those rotations can change a little. It's just going to be highly competitive, man. And you're going to see a, a team really locked in and compete because they're playing for for time on the court. I know those guys remember last year what Herb did and you see what happened. Like he got in the starting lineup. So uh, if you come here and you produce, you know, no matter who you are, I think Willie Green is the type of coach is he going to find a way to use you. You know what I mean? So those guys know that. And I think for us as, as the flock watching, we're going to see them playing with a little more intensity probably than other teams because they know what's at stake and that if they perform at a certain level, they can actually get some playing time. So I think we're going to see a team similar to what we saw last year, man, with a few new faces. And that right there is, is another part of the excitement. And you might have a guy like KLJ actually out there. I mean, we might play Jackson Hayes in the summer league. Who knows? So it'd be interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't be mad to see some of them guys get out there and play, whether it's Jackson Hayes and – Maybe, you know, of course, Jared Harper could be a guy that the, the Pelicans also yeah. uh, do, you know, send him out there as well. So it'll be intriguing all the way around, man, to see how this stuff shake out, man. Draft coming up, man. Uh, it's going to be interesting, D.C. Let's take a look at some uh, mock drafts as provided by NBA.com that cover the Pelicans. This is a couple of days away, man. So excited about the draft. Uh -huh. What could possibly be? So this is the most oh, common picks right here. 
uh, for the Pelicans. You can see right here, the Pelicans right here at number eight. They got uh, Dyson Daniels with all of their mock drafters uh, consistently picking Dyson Daniels. And then there are even four selections for DC version. Uh, this year's uh, Cam uh, Cam Reddish, no. Shade Sharp, DC uh, is very happy to see Shade no. Sharp up there no. as well. So there you go. And as we scroll down, you can see the breakdown right here individually. Then how they draft rollout is they got Jabari Smith going uh, to Orlando, followed by Chet Holgram. And then you got uh, Apollo there, followed by Jade and Ivy going to Sacramento. They just keep picking guards and just destroying their careers. And then, uh, and, and, and man, hey, hey, and Ivy, they actually they said, if you get drafted by Sacramento, how would you feel about that? He said, Well, I, you know, I, I don't think it's the worst place in the world, <laughs> right? It, that it, was just you. Yeah, but who, that was just yeah, but you, it's just stupid, man. Like, I mean, damn. people say if you're the if you're the Sacramento, King, just keep just keep picking fucking guards until. You find a Hall of Famer. Why I mean, wouldn't they take? Why wouldn't they take Murray? I think that would. That's be what I'm saying, man. Them. You got you add somebody else to what you. The bonus got can't play a lick of defense. You got Stop. a guy that could possibly stick some centers, and you could play him at the wing. You know what I mean? Like it don't DC. You I don't know. Know. It don't make any sense, man. Just keep picking guards, man. Don't pick and, and don't do that, Sacramento. Don't pick another guard if you're not. You know, if you have to trade out of the pick and somebody's there, trade oh, down. Wow. I, don't think you, I will take we, we Keegan, Keegan Murray John Mitchell there. number ten, and and we're not really high on him anymore. So we're just gonna take That's another one. That's why y'all a joke out there. That's why y'all keep <laughs> losing. You keep taking guards all the time. Stack pile. You got. You just took Donovan. What's his name? DC. Well, uh, uh, what's his brother name? The young point guard they took last year. Davion uh, Mitchell. Davion Mitchell, and then they still had. They just trying to trade out your boy Fox, and then he didn't couldn't find a suitor to say, "Now nah, we're gonna keep you." And then draft Jade Ivey with got the rid of the best guard they had and Halliburton. And Halliburton, a, a point guard. He got rid of him, and, and it just, <laughs> he was actually good. That man was running around saying he wanted to, he wanted to retire with the Kings. He wanted to turn everything around. He he oh, went he out about, saying all of that. Oh, he about to fix him. it. We got to get him up out of it. Man, what the hell wrong with the people, man? But moving on, say, to no, the next... we're looking for the next Steph Curry. Uh, we're gonna keep drafting guards until we get the next Steph Curry because that's yeah. the rumor they say about the owner. He really likes Steph Curry, so he's trying to find that next guy that's like yeah, Curry. They need, they need to I get guess. the team out that dumbass's hands, man. You're gonna, really be, you're gonna be looking forever. Dumbass, so that you ain't gonna see no, that's, no that's Steph why, Curry. That's the reason man. why the Sacramento is stinking it up because of a dumb, dumbass owner. And boy, they need to really put pressure on that guy. To get his hands off the blueprints, uh, no, California don't have enough teams, Q. So they don't need go. to move their franchise. No, we, uh, you don't have a dumbass like Perkins running around talking about Sacramento need to lose their team. They don't have enough teams in California. Why would we want to do that to California? Straight up, Keegan Murray to Detroit, which wouldn't be a bad move. Benedict Matherin uh, to the Pacers, according to this mock draft. Dyson Daniels goes to the to the Portland Trailblazers, a pick before. Um, as a pick, a play, a pick before the Pelicans, who they got listed as Shady Iron Sharp, which is DC's Cam Reddish. DC loves this pick. He loves oh, that's, that's, that's Shady Iron Sharp. That's and, then, and, and, and then, that's of course, of course, what they're saying is athletic wing who can make a difference on both ends with finishes around the rim and reliable jump shots. Uh, set his freshman year at Kentucky, so the year love could be affected by his transition. This is the same Shady Iron Sharp that turned down a workout with the Pelicans, by the way. So, I mean, we don't know if that's actually true, though. Okay, let's keep it moving, DC. The DC will just defend. We don't DC know if will that's defend Shaden Sharp forever. All right. I don't know next. if that's true, man. Maybe he did. did. If he did, DC, DC, if please. he did, then the hell with him. If he don't want to be here, but DC. I don't know if that's true. DC Jalen uh, Duran at the Spurs, which is really nice picking Johnny Davis uh, to the Washington, which is I, I, the guy if I was the Spurs, I would take Johnny Davis. I would, they they they're really dropping the ball if they take Duran and Davis is sitting right there. They're gonna regret that. Johnny Davis is the pick I take. I think we should take, but hey, uh, I'm just a yeah. Pelican guy. You, yeah, know? you can be right, man. You can be right with that. I think Davis is gonna be a good player. Yeah, but so that's the pick. And by the way, DC, uh Jeremy Sohan goes to the goes 12th to OKC in that draft. Uh, in that mock draft, AJ Griffin to the Knicks in that mock draft. So that, mm, interesting, very interesting. That's another guy I actually like. Yeah, I know a lot of people are down on him. I don't think he's bad. As some of the people I hear, 
But I'm not as high on him as some of his believers, too, because they, man, Jay, AJ Smith should be a top five pick. It's, it's uh, crazy how he, I don't believe that. No, no. He, he no. might be another guy we look back on this draft, man. And, you know, people are like, damn, you know, we could have had him. He could be one of those guys, man. Uh, maybe. I mean, he if he could turns his def- if he turns his defense into something, and he has that that. Well, that his shooting. defense. He he has the mentality to want to play D. I see that. I've seen him play D he at high level. Effort. He just not good. He ain't. He, ain't he just couldn't that. move laterally. So mm-hmm. you know, it's the whole thing with him being injured. I wonder if that's still bothering him, or or did he lose that athleticism due to the injury, and he'll never get it back? I I don't I don't know. Right, so I mean, at at some point, man, we'll it, it this will come to a head coming up on the NBA draft, man. That'll happen Thursday, man. It's gonna be fun, and the Pelican Post Game Report will be live, uh, in in and representing at that uh, with the Pelican Post Game Report, man. We'll be live, so tune in. We'll be opening up the lines, uh, and having some fun here on the Pelican Post Game Report to hear. All from right, the fans, man. So yeah, that's gonna be cool. To care about all that, we'll see if all yeah, the, the, the Zion shoes. I think they drop in the night, man. It's on the twenty second. All right, DC says he's gonna get the Zion shoes and put them on and put and paint Jamaica flags all over for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing that for, but but uh, Thursday, June the twenty third at eight p.m. Eastern time, which is seven p.m. Central time. Like I said, the Pelican Post Game Report will be in full effect, baby. As you can see, the order of the drag pails pick at eight. They also have two second round drafts uh, picks as well. We don't anticipate them using those, perhaps trading both for one and taking one player or perhaps not drafting the second round at all. Maybe they add them to a trade. They do have some capital there, as you can see. But Thursday, it goes down, man. As we finally, the draft finally comes to a head. And with Pelicans, we'll finally find out what they'll do with that pick. So that'll be fun to watch. So with that being said, man, we're going to clock out on that. Please feel free to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and check out the link and hit the check out the link in the, the link tree in the description section for all our socials, all of in the merch stores and all that great stuff is at, at the link tree organized so nicely. So with that being said, we're going to clock out on that. I'm Big Q. It's DC, man. And we're going to holler at you guys. At the draft show, DC. So, oh, yeah, uh, bring your lucky Jamaican uh, four leaf clover, brother. We I ain't eat. got none of them, bro. So, don't count on that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fam. We're gonna holler at y'all later. Much love <laughs> and go, pals. <laughs>